advanced canola trait technology is here. And it's soon to be the talk of the town. Optimum Glide delivers excellent yield potential and agronomic trait performance, improved crop safety, enhanced weed control, and a wider window of application. You're going to want to see this. Learn more at OptimumGlide.ca. It's time for Real Ag Radio on Rural Radio Channel 147 on Sirius XM. Radio and realagriculture.com is your home for insight and analysis of the issues that are impacting your farm business. Let's get real and get connected with Real Ag Radio. Hello and welcome to Real Ag Radio on this Thursday, July 20th. I am your host, Lindsay Smith, and I am absolutely pleased to be hosting the Farmer Rapid Fire brought to you by Pioneer Seeds Canada. Yes, every Thursday we head across Canada, sometimes even to the U.S., and we have a chat with several different farmers, usually in a couple different provinces, and figure out what is happening this week on the farm. So we will do that, of course, today. And we do have Ambrose Allen. He's the Southeast Saskatchewan uh, rep for Pioneer Seeds Canada. Uh, Ambrose will join me later in the show to talk about what the crops look like there on the eastern side of the province and what challenges farmers are facing and, of course, what they should be planning for. So thanks for joining me today. I'm super excited about this show. And tomorrow, tune in. 4.30 4.30 Eastern, right here, Rural Radio, Channel 147, Real Egg Radio. It's the Issues Panel. I'm super pumped. Uh, I feel like Sean has not been around all week. I know he was on the show yesterday, but I've hardly seen him or talked to him. Um, and we've got Megan Murdoch is going to join us for the Issues Panel. And there has been so much stuff happening that we simply just have not had really that much time to talk about. So we will for sure be tackling some of what's kind of coming out of the uh, federal provincial territorial ministers meeting that wraps up tomorrow. We of course have what's happening in the Black Sea region and how that may impact grain markets. We had some inflation data out this week, which Calvin will not be there tomorrow. He's on holidays this week. Uh, so we will have a warm and fuzzy inflation conversation in his honor. Um, all right. As always, we'd love some feedback on the show, or maybe, and here's a fun one, maybe you want to be on the Farmer Rapid Fire. We are always looking for new voices, new locations. We just love to get to know our audience, and the audience loves to get to know different farmers in different areas and what farming looks like where they are. So if you are interested, you can always let us know. It's usually just 10, 15 minutes of your time every maybe six to eight weeks, uh, sometimes less, depending. And uh, yeah, just let us know. So you can call that Real Egg Feedback Line. 1-855-776-6147. You can drop me an email, lsmith at realagriculture.com. Or of course, you can find us across social media at Real Agriculture, uh, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, threads, wherever you are, we are there too. And don't forget, we have a YouTube channel as well. You can uh, subscribe there at Real Agriculture and uh, never miss a video. We've got some shorts. We've got all of our school videos are on there. Um, and uh, Actually, you can catch replays of this show on there as well. So if uh, if YouTube is your app of choice, we're there too. Okay, without further ado, let's get to the show. Uh, I've got Tyler Lester joining me right after the break. We're going to head on down to Prince Edward County right after this. Infuse some energy into your next corporate event, customer meeting, or conference with Real Ag Radio. Canada's National Agriculture Radio Show. Create a unique experience at your next event with host Sean Haney, broadcasting Real Ag Radio live on Sirius XM, featuring exciting guests, captivating interviews, and the latest news from the agriculture community. Contact advertising at realagriculture.com or call 587-787-1795 to book your on-location with Real Ag Radio today. I am your host, today, Lindsay Smith. And now we have a product spotlight. I've got with me Michelle Gemmel. She's the National Market Sense leader with Cargill. Okay, tell me about Market Sense. What is this product? 
Yeah, so Market Sense is a subscription-based service that we offer from Cargill. It's really focused on helping our farm clients make confident green marketing decisions. It involves a team of advisors who come to your farm. We would then provide market insights and strategies throughout the year to help you manage risk and maximize opportunity. What we found too is over the last two decades, we have a proven formula for success that matches the farmer's unique individual situation with our marketing insights and our portfolio of specialized grain contracts. So for those who might be interested in Cargill's Market Sense program, where can they go? CargillAg.ca slash Market Sense. Or you can visit one of our locations nearby to you and ask to speak to one of our advisors. Welcome back to Real Ag Radio here on Rural Radio Channel 147. You are listening to the Farmer Rapid Fire brought to you by Pioneer Seeds Canada. All right, joining me now from beautiful Bloomfield, Ontario, it's Tyler Lester. Tyler, you're joining us from the top of a combine. What's happening? Uh, service before we start wheat harvest. Mm. T- today, today's going to be our first day out, and uh, I don't want any hiccups. That is uh, <laughs> that is well planned. Let's put it that way. Uh, how does the crop look? So nosing into the wheat uh, very soon. How's it looking out there? Uh, we're hoping for a bumper crop. Things look really good. Our spring was ideal weather, and uh, our corn and soybean crop looks phenomenal. So I'm hoping for a bumper wheat crop. Now, did you get ridiculous downpours at terrible times like many of us have in Ontario? Or has it gone okay? No, we have had uh, a textbook season on my farm so far. You could not ask for more appropriate rains over a more appropriate period of time. I, I said Bloomfield was beautiful. And I mean it. And now, <laughs> it is even more so, <laughs> um, everyone go visit. It's lovely. Uh, all right. So, of course, so prepping for harvest, though, does keep you busy. So is that uh, is that filling your entire week this week or what else is happening on the farm? Uh, no, harvest is going to start and it's uh, all hands on deck, head down, time to combine. Yep. And then what when you're done and you get that little lull, do you have any celebrations for finishing the first stage of harvest? Uh, uh, three days at the cottage mm. is is what my plan is. The kids uh, have not had much time off since uh, school was finished, and they've been busy and have missed uh, dad time because dad's been getting ready for harvest, and mm-hmm. then we're going to have two or three weeks of harvest. And then as soon as harvest is done, we're going to the cottage for a minimum of three days. Well, I think that is a brilliant plan. I will say, I I love in Ontario, when you've got the wheat crop, yes, you have to harvest in summer. But then like there is that reprieve in between before you head into the beans. Like you get that where, you know, you're all caught up for a little while. So it, that's, it sounds like a brilliant plan. It it does. It, there is that little bit of a reprieve uh, on my own farm, we don't have any hay to make, so mm. we do get that bit of a lull. But uh, some of the my neighbors, the dairy farms and the, and the beef guys and the sheep guys have some hay to make, which so far we've had pretty decent weather for making good quality feed. But uh, Well, you are lucky in that instance because we are not having the same <laughs> luck well uh, this I, I mean i'm glad to hear it's going well for you but we making hay this season has certainly been a challenge there was that early window for us and then since then we just it seems to rain every single day it's really hard to make the decision to go ahead and cut it makes me think sometimes that you cash croppers <laughs> have the right idea i gotta tell you um all right so i i this question of the week uh i want to talk about now it sounds like things have gone very well and i don't like to focus on the negative but i'm always curious as to what some of the biggest agronomic challenges are because we get to travel all over canada and sometimes the u.s on this farmer rapid fire um and so i want to know what weed or insect or disease has been particularly challenging this year ah flea bane is always our big challenge in the last three or four years in this part of, of Ontario. Mm-hmm. Uh, flea bane, foxtail. Foxtail is also a, an issue. But uh, 
those those would be the big two, I would say. Yeah. And has fleabane become a bigger issue for any particular reason you can put your finger on, or it's just one that once it sort of takes hold, it just takes off? Oh, uh, once it's here, it kind of takes off. Um, social issues that we see in this part of Ontario are uh, new landowners mm. with a different understanding and perspective on uh, on land management, and they don't manage their weeds mm-hmm. in productive or effective ways, and uh, those pieces of property become seed production. Uh, places and, and problems that blow over the fence. Mm-hmm. Good fences make good neighbors, but so does good weed control. Let's maybe uh, add, that, add that to the list. Yes. Now, you know what? Absolutely. I'm familiar with Bloomfield and where you are. It's a beautiful part of the world, but there's there's likely a lot of people who don't sort of know where Bloomfield is. So tell me a bit about where you are, because it's a really neat little part of Ontario. Uh we are on a peninsula that sticks out into Lake Ontario. Uh, we are, oh, we're an hour west of Kingston, and we're about two or two and a half hours, depending on what you consider Toronto to be, mm-hmm. uh, east of Toronto. Um, our... Our primary destinations here would be the Sandbanks Provincial Park, uh, the beautiful sand beaches out uh, on the shores of Lake Ontario, and uh, on as a number of wineries and vineyards and and uh, in the area, and some wonderful roadside stands uh, to get fresh produce from. So, uh, lots of interesting reasons to to come and spend a few days here for sure and it it does i have been there in summer the crowds can get a little overwhelming uh personal request was please pay attention to the slow moving vehicle signs yes if you're driving in the area (laughs) yes 100 percent. because you are as you mentioned i mean it is a very productive and bustling agricultural area but it is, of course, Absolutely. also a tourist destination. And so you do have a lot of people coming from the cities um, to enjoy the beauty that is Prince Edward County. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah. It's, it's easy to share with people who are, are in the right mindset that, that uh, aren't in a hurry to get somewhere and, mm-hmm. and are here on vacation and accept that they're here on vacation. Mm-hmm. Everybody needs to share the roads and, and go home safe. Absolutely. Now, I will say um, there is, I, I hope it's still there, there's an antique shop with a very interesting name. Do you know which one I'm talking McCool's? about? McCool's? <laughs> and the, is McCool's it, Reuse? Yes. And then there isn't the sign says something like Dead People's Things or something like oh, that? Oh, Dead People's Stuff. Now dead the, People's the, Stuff. The people from Dead People's Stuff have... Uh, <laughs> I believe that they've closed. Yeah, I, I thought I thought so. I, believe, yeah. I think this is the first year that they have closed. But yeah. yes, yeah. dead people stuff. Yeah. But there there are a number of uh, of interesting antique shops. Uh, there's County Traders and there's McCool's and there's uh, Buds and the, yeah. there are a number of places. Yes. Yeah, exactly. It is a great place to explore. All right, we are out of time. Uh, Tyler, thank you so much for uh, staying safe on top of that combine, for one thing, uh, but also for taking time out of your busy schedule to share a little bit of what's happening in your part of the world. We really appreciate it. Very good. Thanks for the call. All right. Big thanks to Tyler for joining me on the show today. Yes, if you are in Ontario in the summer, I highly recommend heading on over to Prince Edward County if ever you have the chance. Okay, we're going to take a quick break. And when I come back, we're going to stick to Ontario. We're going to head down to Brownsville and talk to Kevin Buckner right after this. Advanced canola trait technology is here. And it's soon to be the talk of the town. Optimum Glide delivers excellent yield potential and agronomic trait performance. Improved crop safety. Enhanced weed control. 
and a wider window of application. You're going to want to see this. Learn more at OptimumGlide.ca. As you head out into the field this season, the Corn School's got you covered. Everything from tillage discussions, weed control info, field trial results, yield strategies, and more. The Corn School on RealAgriculture.com has the information and advice you need to help you succeed. Brought to you by Pride Seeds and BASF. Corn School episodes are available at CornSchool.com, from RealAgriculture.com, or as a podcast from your favorite streaming service. Download the latest episode today. Hi, I'm Bernard Tobin, host of the Soybean School on RealAgriculture.com. Throughout the year, on the Soybean School, we'll bring you timely agronomic video content from planting to harvest, from the latest agronomic research to the latest in production technology. Check out our massive video library on YouTube, RealAgriculture.com, or download the audio podcast versions wherever you get your podcasts. The Soybean School is brought to you by Pride Seeds, BASF, and Syngenta Canada. Welcome back to Real Ag Radio. I am your host for the day, Lindsay Smith. And yes, it is Thursday, and that means a farmer rapid fire. And today's show is brought to you by Pioneer Seeds Canada. For more than 90 years, Pioneer has developed and tested products to meet your local challenges. With new Optimum Gly Canola, enlist E3 soybeans to performing corn products and industry-leading traits and technologies. To maximize your field potential, Pioneer's on-the-ground teams can help you get the right products for your fields. Visit Pioneer.com slash Canada to learn more. All right, we head to Brownsville, as I promised, to chat with Kevin Buckner. Kevin, how are you? I'm pretty good. How about you? I'm doing well. The sun is shining. It's a beautiful day. Uh, we hope it lasts because we are one of the ones that have been getting hammered by rain every day. Uh, where, so whereabouts is Brownsville? Uh, Brownsville, we're about 30 minutes east of uh, London and uh, about 10 minutes south of uh, Woodstock. Oh, okay. And so how do the crops look right now? Uh, they're looking pretty fantastic in our area. We have been pretty fortunate. We haven't gotten a ton of rain, so we're not doing or having the same issues as some people where the ground is actually too saturated. And, uh, yeah, we're... Sitting pretty, pretty. <laughs> now you do have dairy and grain, right? Yep, we do a little bit of both. <laughs> and how how has hay gone then? Hey, we just finished up second cut, and then uh, we also cut our direct seeding. And this year we mixed it with some oats, and uh, so far the tonnage has been uh, excellent, and the quality has been pretty good too. All right, that's that's not bad. Now, do you? Do you typically use oats as a nurse crop for new seeding out, or is that a new thing? Uh, so we tried it last year, and it paid off pretty well. And uh, this thing with direct seeding, we can never get enough cut. We're scraping it across the ground, trying to pick it all up. So we started adding the oats, and we feed it to our heifers. It's not quite the quality we need for our cows, but it's good feed for heifers. Nice. And so when did when would that have gone in this spring? So uh, pretty much early April, we uh, we just kind of uh, broadcast uh, oats and work it in with uh, tillage, and then uh, we plant uh, alfalfa pretty much the day after. Huh, that is very cool. Okay, I'm glad it's working. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> not all these experiments always do, let's be honest. No, <laughs> Yeah, we have had some failures in the past, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. All right. Uh, so, now, do you grow wheat in rotation then, too? We do, and uh, it's looking like today we're going to be probably testing ours to see if it's uh, ready to go. Mm-hmm. Have you, now, you, so you're still in the, sort of the sweet spot there where you haven't had a lot of the these crazy downpours, because I do hear reports that uh, quality is starting to wane a little bit for some of the wheat crop, but you figure yours looks all right? Yeah, we have no issues down here so far. We have been very fortunate. Nice. That is good to hear. Um, and it does seem uh, it does seem to be the trend this week that uh, combines are firing up from one end to the other pretty much. Uh, so that's exciting. It's always a nice time of year for sure uh, to try and get some of this crop in the bin and off, off to greener pastures, let's say. Uh, so my question this week is about 
challenges for the year, so even in a good year, what insect disease or weed has been particularly challenging this year on your farm? Uh, so far, we haven't had a ton of issues. Um, tar spot has started to uh, poke up uh, in our area, so spraying fungicide on corn has become pretty much standard practice where before it was uh, kind of based on the year. Mm-hmm. Insects, we haven't really had much issues with. Uh, we had some aphids in our alfalfa during second cut, but we always joke that that just raises the protein levels in the <laughs> feed. <laughs> it's true. Um, I do wonder, actually. We should run a trial and see how much it actually might make a difference. Now, so tar spot, have you had, have you battled with tar spot before? I know last year was kind of a dud as far as we were worried about it. Didn't happen this year situation seems perhaps a little more conducive to tar spot is this new for for your farmer have you dealt with it a couple times already so last year it just started to show up and uh about an hour west of us they definitely had issues and like if you didn't spray it was 20 to 50 bushel difference wow so uh we're kind of being proactive. Uh, we only leave a couple test trips to see what, whether it's paying or not. And last year was pretty much break even, but we'll uh, we'll see this year again. Hmm. Now, so I guess that's the question, though. Last year, did you have northern corn leaf blight and some other issues that showed up as well, or was it a pretty clean year regardless? It was a pretty clean year regardless. Yeah, um, it was pretty dry last year for or at least compared to this one, anyway, it seems like it. And I will qualify that, dry for Ontario, not dry overall, um, but for Ontario, so for sure. Uh, so what's the, uh, do you, so you've got dairy. So the, the farmer I had on just before you um, was glad to be nosing into the wheat because it meant they'd get a little reprieve uh, before, you know, the very busy harvest season. But with dairy, that usually means you'd be doing hay in between there. But do you get a chance uh, as the summer goes on here to take some time off and maybe get to a lake or a beach? Well, usually it's uh, middle of August is kind of my time off. It seems that we finish up wheat and third cut, and then there's about two weeks of uh, downtime. Uh, I usually try to do a couple uh, Jays games during that time, and if not, go to the wife's family cottage and you know just enjoy some downtime and actually get to enjoy the weather for once yeah instead of fighting it all the time um no that's good and uh i haven't been to a jays game in years so uh they're so much fun and uh hope you get to some of those so that's good and anything uh anything new planned for this fall is there anything you're going to try going into the winter season anything on the on the plan for next year that might be different um, next year, not quite. We're putting in a new bunk so we can put away some more storage and hopefully always feed uh, fermented feed because that always seems to be a battle when you know, we're feeding grain feed. Mm-hmm. And, uh, other than that, it's just pretty much, you know, steady ahead and, you know, keep an uh, eye on the bottom line. Yeah, absolutely. Bunk space is always good. All right, Kevin, that sounds good. I hope you do manage to take in a few of those Jays games uh, a little later, get some beach time. Uh, it's always good. And, uh, yeah, good luck with harvest. Let's hope that wheat comes off clean. All right. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me on. All right. Big thanks to Kevin for joining us on the show today. It's time to head to Saskatchewan. We're going to hear from Ambrose Allen right after this. If you're involved in the agriculture industry, it's important to stay informed on all the latest issues affecting your business. At realagriculture.com, we offer fast, reliable news, information, and insights to help you keep on top of all of the latest in Canadian agriculture. Visit realagriculture.com and sign up for our free daily newsletter covering everything from news, agronomy, animal agriculture, and much more. Visit realagriculture.com forward slash subscribe today. Whether you're seeding, harvesting, or anything in between, the Wheat School on realagriculture.com has you covered. Timely agronomic information from industry experts available online anytime. 
Give your wheat crop a good start and a great finish with the Wheat School on realagriculture.com. Brought to you by CNM Seeds, Syngenta Canada, and the Alberta Wheat and Barley Commission. Welcome back to Real Egg Radio here on this Thursday. This show, of course, brought to you by Pioneer Seeds Canada. And on today's show, we've got Ambrose Allen. He's the Pioneer Area Agronomist on the east side of Saskatchewan. Welcome here, Ambrose. Uh, Thanks for having me today. All right. So eastern Saskatchewan, you're based, I think, Yorkton area. But, of course, you cover a pretty large area what do the crops look like? Are you one of the lucky ones, or is it dry? Yeah, so the crops are, I guess I guess you can take a look at a, a crop and then drive two miles and get something different. So it's a mixed a mixed bag of everything out here this year. Uh, right, around, right around Yorkton itself, they're pretty good. And as you branch away um, to the south and to the north and to the east, they kind of start to uh, get a little bit weaker, but there still is pockets that, that have got the rainfalls and some that haven't um and and that's just the nature of it so it's mm-hmm. uh, it's like a mixed bag of everything now was last year incredibly dry in that area and this year slightly better or how did last year go so yeah last year we started off and had we had a lot of rainfall and um we had good crops uh wonderful stands and a lot of vegetation and then missed kind of missed the rains in august to create the yield that lots of guys were were expecting um for the most part this year we started off with really beautiful conditions and lots of moisture uh seeped the crops into great ground great conditions they came up very quick and um moved through the stages um but unfortunately then this the the taps had turned off in, Mm -hmm. in a lot of places and has that presented any challenges i mean i think we always i've been seeing some terrible images of the damage that grasshoppers have done in some dry areas. Are you experiencing that uh, on the east side as well? Yeah, there's, there has been some grasshoppers with feeding, and uh, some guys have, have sprayed for them. Some guys it's, uh, spray once and they're back again, and, and you got to decide if what you have there is worth protecting anymore. But, you know, there is, there is some decent stuff, and if we can get rain or two here in the next couple of weeks, we'll hopefully be pleasantly surprised with what we get at the end of end of the year. Maybe contra to what we saw last year with beautiful stand finish if we have, you know, some little bit lighter stands and we happen to get a couple finishing filling rains, um, guys can be pleasantly surprised. Mm-hmm. And uh, we're crossing our fingers for that. Yeah, for sure. So what does a canola look like? Certainly lots of canola out that way. How is it faring in this uh, dry spell? Yeah, I think this year is probably the, you know, the year I've seen the emergence be the best ever. I would say that I I was called to probably the lowest mount, amounts of fields this spring to uh, to check out things, to see bad things that maybe happened. So um, it started off really well, and it's cabbage like I haven't seen since about 2009 in a lot of areas. Um, where we had the good moisture, it looks it looks really good now. It's it's hanging on and starting to struggle. Um, I think maybe some of the cooler temperatures, of course, and a little bit of smoke maybe has helped it out uh, through this July stint where, where typically things can burn off. Um, but it's, I think it's the, it's the crop that probably provides the most optimism in the area right now. Mm-hmm. And uh, like I said earlier, if, it's, if it can get those couple rains, uh, I hope guys are, are happy with what it, what it will deliver. It is an adaptable crop, isn't it? Yes, it's very, very plastic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Now, you did mention the smoke that certainly uh, has been a challenge for many uh, in in Alberta, even here in Ontario. Certainly, you know, hazy conditions. Has it been worse this year than past years for your area? Yeah, we've had more smoke in this area, I would say, this year than, than past years. Uh, we'd have to go back quite a few years now, maybe to 12, 13, when we had smoke like this right around these areas but it it certainly there certainly is a lot of smoke and it seems to be coming from of course different areas so some days it'll come from the north and from the west and we haven't had any of of the smoke from the east make it all the way here yet but uh yeah it's definitely it's definitely uh top of mind as well 
Mm-hmm. Now, so in, in a year like this where, you know, there's really nothing you can do on the Mother Nature side, and, and perhaps if she does send a few timely rains, you'll be looking at some good yields. What are some of the biggest agronomic questions you're getting right now, or does it keep the phone pretty quiet? Yeah, the phone has been pretty quiet. I guess we did have some frost down uh, our coal uh, country and area um, on June, or oh, sorry, July 5th, but that had the phone ringing, and unfortunately some crops took it worse than others, like, like corn took it pretty bad, and, uh, you know, there's some damage to some wheat down there and sunflowers as well, but the, the canola seemed to handle it well, and maybe we'll see some blanks there. But, you know, other than that, it has it has been a little bit quieter. I think, um, you know, we're forever optimistic in ag- agriculture, and uh, as the as the forecast rain fall dwindles and the, uh, mm-hmm. the ground gets drier, the optimism kind of goes down a little bit. And I think um, I think guys maybe are enjoying the lake or enjoying the the ball diamond or enjoying some of those other things that we need to take advantage of because, of course, the fungicide season hasn't hasn't been there in this area. Mm-hmm. So take take the good where you can, right? It means Absolutely. maybe maybe enjoying the summer weather just a little bit more, and we hope for some of those timely rains to come. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. I think, and then the too is, I, I, I guess it's, everything's weather dependent, as we've mentioned. But I think, I think we harvest could come in quick, so we're going to have to be be ready for that. And I think mm-hmm. guys will be get machinery ready, and there's going to be some decisions around a lot of stands. Are they, you know, do I want to leave this? stand to straight cut do i have to leave the stand to straight cut you know is there enough there for a windrow all those questions are going to come into play for producers and um, i think it'll be upon us uh, maybe before maybe before we're even ready for it so mm-hmm. it that's, can come in very quickly it's a good point it does uh, tend to sneak up on you that's for sure all right uh, ambrose thank you so much for uh, taking the time today it's super interesting right on thank you for your time All right, we'll be back with more Real Ag Radio right after this. Peter Johnson at WheatPeakRealAgriculture.com. I'm the host of The Word, and I love doing The Word. I love the questions. I love the challenges. I love having to apply agronomics to all over the globe and areas outside of my normal jurisdiction. Also, I love the feedback the most where growers challenge me, tell me about their plot results, help me to learn. The Word, absolutely the best part of my day. Canola is more than just a pretty face in the prairie landscape. It's a big business, both here and around the world, that requires you to be informed and up-to-date on everything it takes to grow a successful crop. The Canola School on realagriculture.com has an expert library of video resources covering markets, agronomy, and more to help you grow a healthy and profitable canola crop. Visit canolaschool.com today. Brought to you by BASF Canada and Invigor Hybrid Canola. Welcome back to Real Egg Radio here on this Thursday, brought to you by Pioneer Seeds Canada. It is the Farmer Rapid Fire. Joining me now out of rest in Manitoba is Fred Gregg. Fred, how are you? I'm fantastic, Lindsay. How are you doing? Oh, fantastic. I like that. No, you know what? It's going it's going pretty good. We got some hay getting rolled up today, which is always exciting. Um, and I get to host the Farmer Rapid Fire, which I love. So we've been traveling across Canada. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah. Well, I normally, I think one of my favorite parts about about your show is, is the the issues panel because mm. you guys do all the heavy lifting for me, and it feels like I can just have a coffee and listen along. There so, you yeah. go. Do I'm we do we to talk to you. see? There you go. But do we get it right? I guess is the question. Or are we out to lunch? Uh, you know what? I it's it, I like it because you hear a couple of different slants on things that you know sometimes you don't always think about. So yeah, I think you do. I think you keep it keep it broad enough that that it it uh, yeah covers all the bases. I would say. All right. Okay. Well, if we ever get it very wrong, and by we I mean one of us, probably Sean, then please let us know <laughs> because we really appreciate that. Uh, yeah, it is. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. of course that that happens on Friday our issues panel, and uh, tomorrow we've got Megan Murdoch joining us. Kelvin's actually off this week, which is one of the things we're talking about this week is uh, some downtime in the summer. 
So now you are busy. Fred, tell us a bit about your farm, because I have a feeling you don't get a lot of downtime in the summer based on what's all on your plate. Uh, but tell me about your farm in Ruston. Yeah, we have a pedigreed seed farm, and uh, we've got a, a small beef cow herd that we do. We background some some calves. So yeah, we're we are uh, the crops. We're we're one of those areas that we're missing some rain, so we didn't have to spend uh, all that time in the sprayer putting fungicides on that we normally do. But we got the first cut of hay wrapped up and moving on, and now we're. Where crop inspecting is getting done on the on the seed field, so we've got a bit of isolations to do. We've got a couple of new varieties, and we've got a breeder, a couple of breeder plots of the new malt barley. So we're starting to walk through that because it's just about finished heading out. So yeah, there's there's not a tremendous amount of time, like any farmer in the summertime. But yeah, we try to get everybody a, at least a week off of lake time or whatever they do. I farm with a couple of kids, and they have have children so it's nice for them to get some time off and away so so uh yeah they get a bit of a break and then Lori I and I we can kind of take a little more time mm-hmm. once it's not quite so busy mm-hmm. now you you background cattle you said or do you run cow calf yeah cow calf but we background our calves we'll generally try to sell the steers keep them under that thousand pounds so they generally go in late december or early january and then the heifers are a month or two after that but yeah the way the cattle market looks at maybe we won't have to this year i'm not sure (laughs) well i was gonna say (laughs) seems like a year you've been waiting for if you've had cattle a while (laughs) yeah like it's nice because when you used to you know meet somebody new and you said you had cows they kind of looked at you like you were a little bit slow because why are you (laughs) You know, losing money at that. So now, yeah, everybody's, yeah, now I get it. Yeah, yeah. That's well, you know what? That's how people look at people with sheep. So I hear what you're saying. <laughs> yeah, I feel that really, you know, yeah. in my soul. Uh, but yeah, you know, I think you're right. Your time has come as cattle producers to enjoy perhaps some margin, which is long overdue. So that's that's not so bad, I guess. And it, And yeah, if you don't have to feed them to December, then why not? Yes. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Now, you did mention, so pedigreed seed producer, so which, uh, you did mention barley. What all do you grow for seed? Uh, we do uh, wheat oats, barley, um, and soybeans, and uh, flax, which this is the first year we have not had any flax on the farm because it's, you know, we're just not seeing the demand for flax from our customers. And uh, we're back into canary seed. Um, and yeah, anything that we we think we can, our customers would like to try. We, you know, we're doing a bit of cover cropping stuff. So yeah, it's 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 really always exciting to to try something new. We've got a uh, back in the triticale game. There's a an onless variety because that was always a bit of an mm-hmm. issue here. Guys were were getting. Uh, you know, a bit of lump jaw, and the only thing they had changed was chopping some triticale. So we're pretty excited to, to have this, and then it, it uh, seems like it's also going into that cover crop market. So mm-hmm. with with those magical warm and cool season blends. Yes, absolutely. Now this is a spring triticale, not a fall. Well, this, this is, is is trical, and it's supposed to be a winter or a spring that it will. <laughs> It will, yeah, fertilize like it, <laughs> like. That. Wait a minute! Awesome. This seems like something yeah. that isn't possible. Yeah, yeah, okay. I feel like kind of a used car salesman, you know, <laughs> going to be a, or a snake oil guy. Yeah. But, but then after we, it was one of those kind of last minute things. Uh, Cantera seeds. Rick Love called us and said, "Do you want to try that?" And I thought, "Wow, that sounds really cool." So yeah, he got it on the trucks. We got you know, four totes, I think, out of. Oh, okay. it was out of Montana, I think, somewhere. So then we planted it, and then I got thinking, wait a minute, if it's fall and spring, is that going to be like rye? Because that's, yeah. you know, we just hate rye because we pick it out of our crops for the next five years. Whatever. Yeah, what is it? Once a rye grower, always a rye grower? Something like that? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, I've never heard that. Oh, I mean, yeah, there you go. Yeah, you you can. 
by all means. I'll give you full credit. Yeah, okay, thank you. Credit. Yeah, I, I can't say that I came up with it, but um, please give me credit. So, but interesting, although I could see, so triticale is that it is a cross between wheat and rye, for those who don't know. And I will tell you, Fred, that I have, here in Ontario, a lot of people call it triticale. Um, and so I correct oh. them. I correct them every time that it's triticale. Oh, there. So, yeah, so there you go. You pronounce it E at the end. Um, but so I... I and it is very, uh, it, it grows well in cool conditions, of course, and pretty hardy. So there you go, everybody. Give it a whirl. Yeah, well, thanks for that. Yeah, and yeah. I, I got a text from, from Rick. He was up at Ag in Motion, and he said they're getting lots of excitement about the variety. They've got it, got it sown there. It looks pretty solid. And, and we do tend to see, like, it's never going to displace corn for our cattle producers. Right. But I think guys are looking for something you know a little extra and they're not sure they have enough and they don't want to mm-hmm. want something a little less costly to plant so yeah we'll we'll see mm-hmm. we'll see that's, that's sort of what oats do here in ontario oats tend to be that if you're going to throw something in for a cover crop it's oats if you're going to try and thicken something up it's oats it's i don't know why oats. it just yep yeah, just seems to be the thing so that's that's what we get I wouldn't mind growing some triticale, okay. I'll be honest. The, the heads are beautiful. Um, also, though, so interesting, less demand for flax, though not maybe surprising. Um, but canary seed, how long has it been since you've grown canary seed? Well, you know, we used to, we weren't huge because we're kind of on the edge. I always mm-hmm. say we can get, uh, we're, you know, 30 miles away from, or 30 minutes away from Saskatchewan. So if we get Saskatchewan weather, um, canary seed does really well if, if we get our Manitoba with our monsoon season it can sometimes lodge quite a bit on it so we we would sell we, you know we'd have to grow a, a quarter a small quarter and it would take a couple of years but we would move it but ever since that Mexico and the phytosanitary and it took the big swings out of the market it, you know guys were just you know hesitant to grow it and then the margins and everything else has been so good so yeah guys aren't looking for those niche mm-hmm. crops but now yeah we, we finally sold the rest of our our calvi uh this growing season so guys are back into it because they were able to do some contracting at some profitable levels with some act of god so mm-hmm. so yeah it seems like we're back back in the canary seed game all right it is uh so i will say it wins for me. It's maybe not the prettiest crop because flax probably wins for that, but it has the most interesting head of all the crops. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it is exactly. super cool. Yeah. Anyone who doesn't know what we're talking about, go Google canary seed right now. And it's super cool. Um, all right, Fred, I do hope you get some downtime and enjoy the summer weather. And uh, we'll, we'll talk to you again soon. Maybe uh, send us your, your ideas for the issues panel. We're always looking for more things to discuss. Absolutely. I will try to find something clever. (laughs) (laughs) Thanks so much, Fred. Yeah. All right. Have a great day. You too. And we head over now to Alberta, to Westlock, Alberta, actually, to talk to Mr. John Gelly. John, how are you? Very good. Leaving the best province to the last. (laughs) That's right. right. We like to give Alberta lots of, you know, play, lots of time. We'll just chat about whatever Alberta wants. Uh, it is God's country. <laughs> or something. Um, it is actually a beautiful <laughs> province. And you are in a very lovely place in Alberta. But how do the crops look? Has it been super lovely or not so great? Well, it's been another roller coaster. Uh, you know, we started off with decent moisture and our soil holds the moisture pretty good. We had a really great lush crop starting and then... Uh, didn't see any rain like everybody else for a long, long time, and um, eventually our cereal started to suffer. So we did get uh, five inches of rain in a fairly short time, which water was running everywhere. It was crazy. Um, and then it got dry again, and then it rained again. So it's it's kind of all over the board. The canola looks really good. Timing for moisture for it was really good. Um, cereals not so much they were pretty thin looking all the tillers didn't seem to shoot any heads and then with the last batch of rain poof here come the heads so crops are getting greener now than they by the day so an early August harvest is more looking like a late August harvest for the barley well in, in fairness there are some that are out harvesting cereals now and 
not yes. for good reasons. So pushing harvest is maybe not the worst thing. Early harvest is never usually a good reason or a good thing. So, yeah, we're, we're thankful for what we did get. It, it could have been better, but it certainly could have been a hell of a lot worse. Yeah, absolutely. Now, I like the point you make about soil water holding capacity because, of course, this is this makes, especially in dry areas, it makes all the difference in the world. So how do you, like when you have five inches of rain, I mean, obviously it's going to run off because that's just too much all at once but how key is it and how big of a difference do you see between say you know a a knoll or you know areas that aren't as great a soil as far as water holding capacity goes yeah i mean that's certainly the first place where things start to suffer is up on the hills and um you know we're relatively flat in comparison to the rest of the prairies but um they they suffer first and and uh, but then when you get a lot of moisture the low spots are drowned out all of a sudden so I don't know it 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 seems like it's uh, give and take right mm-hmm. it's, uh, you certainly needed the moisture to recharge the soil there's no doubt about that mm-hmm. we certainly can use some that to where we're nowhere near max capacity in any way yeah. Now, I've been asking everyone about, although I like to keep things positive, and, and for the most part, everybody has had, well, some have even had a really good year so so far, so that's good. But I, I am asking about, because it's always I'm always curious to know sort of what some of the agronomic challenges are in different areas. So today I'm asking about what insect, weed, or disease pest has been a particular challenge this year. You know, we've got away fairly lucky. We normally have a lot of flea beetle issue pressure in the canola, and that really didn't exist this year. Um, there was a, quite a bit of cutworms around. Uh, we didn't have much issue here, but certainly in the area, there was a lot of reseeded uh, ground and a lot of spraying going on. Um, grasshoppers and some of the grasses, but not so much in, in most of the cropped areas. Um, but yeah, I guess cutworms is probably the big one in this area for this year so far i mean who knows what we got coming mm-hmm. looks like uh birth accounts and diamondback counts are down so we hopefully won't have issues there and ligus well, well depending on who you talk to if you talk to keith get gabert uh he doesn't have a threshold for spraying ligus so maybe we don't need to worry about that we'll have to see but uh, so far cutworms is the winner i guess mm-hmm. well and for those who don't grow canola um all of the insects love it, and they love it at the yeah. beginning, and they love it in the middle, and they love it at the end. Um, so, as you pointed out, so we, you are, yeah, it's just that delicious. Um, so, yeah, you still, of course, have a couple of these pest uh, insect pest pressures that may come on yet. Uh, were you surprised at the lack of flea beetles? Yeah, I was really, uh, you know, that's been a perennial problem here. I don't know what happened to them. I know we had a lot of forest fire smoke during that part of the season and maybe that made them dopey or sleepy. I don't know really what's going on. I haven't heard an actual answer from anybody saying, you know, what what's going on there. But it was a pleasant surprise because it's certainly been a big issue in the past. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. Although... I don't know which one's worse. Maybe you can you can choose cutworm or flea beetle, and that cutworm is hard to control because, of course, they're not above ground all the time. But flea beetles come in and they just destroy everything. So I don't know which one's worse. Yeah, I don't know either. It's it's kind of like that uh, slow, painful death of bite by bite uh, by flea beetles, or that one fatal cut with a cutworm and knocks cuts the plant right off, and it's done and it's gone. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It's it's really tough to call you got to be on top of cutworms otherwise they'll just come in and mow your crop right off but mm-hmm. we'd be able to sit there and watch them just painfully chew away at them and eventually you got to spray the damn thing so mm-hmm. yeah absolutely cut. what they call that cut by or death by a thousand cuts that's right death that's by a thousand cuts beetles. that's the flea beetles i like it we should put it on a shirt there you go. You should. <laughs> I want a royalty for that. Yeah, there you go. Okay. TM. Trademark. Uh, there you go. Now, you did, I happen to know, you did get a bit of downtime this week. When do you typically in the summer, when do you get a break 
usually, or do you get one that you tend to try and have some, enjoy the, the summer weather and the summer activities? Well, there's this little event called AIM, mm. Egg in Motion. Mm-hmm. That's usually prime uh, holiday time. So that's why I haven't been to AIM ever yet. I want to. But uh, that's usually the time to get away is once we can get the fungicide on uh, and then, boom, get away for a couple weeks before we have to ramp up for harvest. So mm-hmm. usually that last week of July, first week of August sort of thing is usually the the downtime for me in this area anyway. But, mm-hmm. um, yeah, want to get to that show, but it's at a horrible time for me. It's, that's usually vacation time, getaway time. Mm-hmm. Well, Tuesday it it poured rain and poured rain. So Sean was there Tuesday uh, this week, and uh, yeah, he had to steal a bunny hug. He looked a little cold there. (laughs) He doesn't know what a bunny hug is. It's a hoodie. Oh, according. Why did I say that? I'm from Alberta. That's a a hoodie. Damn it! (laughs) It is a bunny hug. If you're in Saskatchewan, it's a bunny hug. Although if it has a zipper, then it's not. And then I think it's just a sweater. I don't know. Because it doesn't, oh. I don't know, it it has to go over your head, I guess. I don't know, there are rules, John, that we are supposed to listen to, I guess. Um, Nobody's ever thrown the zipper part at me, I don't <laughs> Well, there you go. See, you're learning all sorts of things from today's show. Um, or more, okay. I'm supposed to, but anyway. Anyway, I have also never been to AIM, so we can start a support group. And there you go. But you're right, it's a good time of year to take holidays, so... Those are pretty important. Start a petition to have them maybe move it a little bit. <laughs> Just, yeah, I could do like later July. I don't know. There's so this is actually it's a bit of a discussion, right? Is is there will always be something else to do, and so when you're planning events, because I think about like right now, my colleague Kara and, and Sean as well, like burns all over the place. Like right now there's just events, you know, all the field days are happening, all the events are happening oh, yeah. that are in the field, and and come August, it's a ghost town. Like, just nothing yep. happens in August. So, yeah, it's a bit of, you know, you got to pick a day and then just hope everybody can make it. So maybe one of these years, John, one of these years. Okay. All right. Okay. And you maybe, let me know when you're going. Yeah. Um, hey, that's a great idea. We'll plan to meet there. Yeah. All right. All right, John, I'll let you get back to farming today. But thanks so much for joining me on the Farmer Rapid Fire. Thanks, Lindsay. Have a great week. All right. And with that, we are out of time for this Real Egg Radio Farmer Rapid Fire brought to you by Pioneer Seeds Canada on this Thursday, July 20th. It has been my absolute pleasure to be your host for today and for today's show. Big thank you to my farmers, Kevin, Tyler, Fred, John, and thank you to Ambrose for joining me on today's show. I really do appreciate it. Uh, As always, of course, we love feedback on today's show. 1-855-776-6147 or you can zip me an email lsmith at realagriculture.com. You can let me know if you've got a story idea or perhaps someone you'd like to see. Well, okay, here on the Farmer Rapid Fire. We're always open to new voices, new locations, learning more about farming across Canada and the U.S. Just let us know who you might think might make a great guest. And maybe it's you. You don't have to be shy. Modesty, no. You, If you think you've got something to say, we want to hear it. All righty? Uh, okay, and of course, you can find us across social media at Real Agriculture. We're on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, Threads, TikTok, you name it, we're there. And check out our YouTube channel as well. Tomorrow, the issues panel, as Fred alluded to, the issues panel goes every Friday. Tomorrow, we've got Megan Murdoch, Sean Haney, and myself. And it is uh, Friday, which means we've also got a beef market update with Ann Wasco. So we'll see if those cattle prices are still sizzling, all right, as we head into the thick of summer. I really do hope you've had a wonderful week. If you were at AIM, I hope uh, you managed to stay dry. And then, of course, wear the sunscreen. Let us know how the show went. Uh, Always great to see all the social coming from the field days and all the different events that are happening. So let us know which ones are your favorite. We'd love to hear it. And with that, I will sign off. I will be here on the Issues Panel tomorrow, 4.30 Eastern, here on Rural Radio, Channel 147. Cheers, everybody.